here is something disturbing. I have noticed that even when I just start a little bit to tell people what I really think, it gets dangerous, it gets volatile. If I really, especially certain times over the last two weeks when there were a lot of eyes on me, really told y'all what I see is happening and what I think, I wouldn't make it very long. Because you are that, you are capable, you are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you. Here is something disturbing. I have noticed that even when I just start a little bit to tell people what I really think, it gets dangerous. It gets volatile. If I really, especially certain times over the last two weeks when there were a lot of eyes on me, really told you all what I see is happening and what I think, I wouldn't make it very well. Update. So the trial is scheduled to start on January 9th. Jury selection is starting this week. Now, how many people are actually going to trial? 28 people in the original indictment. Eight have cop pleas, so that leaves 20. Of the 20, six of those people will not be going to trial on January 9th. The reason why? Four of them don't have lawyers, so they're not ready. The judge is going to separate their trial from the rest. Two have not been arrested, so you can't put people on trial who haven't been arrested. So you're left with 14 people who will go to trial. Jury selection starting this week, trial starting January 9. We'll see if we can get you guys a rundown of the details of the charges that they're facing, the charges that have been pled out, and we'll follow along with this trial to see what's going on here. As I said from the beginning in this trial, I thought that a lot of the evidence against Young Thug would get thrown out. Evidence was thrown out against Young Thug, and I thought that they would use the pressure of locking people up with no end in sight to get them to roll on the people that they want. And it's pretty clear that that has been their strategy. We'll see what evidence they actually are able to mount and what the charges look like. Jury State selection starts in the YSL trial today. There's one question that they won't ask these jurors, and they should. I don't know, maybe they'll ask. But basically how you pick a jury, Notice goes out to all the potential members of the jury pool, citizens of the county, they all show up in the court. Then groups of 20 or 30 will go into a specific room and they'll be asked questions by the judge on both sides. Here's the question that I would ask them. Hey, the state, they've mentioned that they have about 300 witnesses. In my experience, it's gonna take a couple months. It might even take up to a year before we hear the testimony from all 300 witnesses. And then there's all this other stuff, expert evidence and open. So this is going to take a while. Can you as a juror commit that amount of time in your life to sit here and then deliver an impartial verdict? If you ask me, the answer would be fuck no. There's no way. I, I can't imagine stopping my life for months and months and months, potentially a year, to listen to 300 witnesses testify. In a RICO case, you can't explain the RICO laws to me. I'm a lawyer from Georgetown Law School. And then after all that issued guilt or innocence i couldn't do it i i can't imagine maybe three weeks maybe a month okay 50 witnesses maybe and so the question that i would ask is what is what are we doing how do you need or have 300 witnesses to prove a case you're not wrong it's not everybody a lot of people and a lot of organizations and companies want to move on as you say from rap they want to get rid of rap music or fundamentally change what it is. And honestly, I'm not necessarily saying that they're wrong for saying, hey, everybody, the violence, the guns, the misogyny, all of that in rap is a problem. But if you think that you have a problem with rap music, if you think the fight is against the music, oh, no, buddy, you have lost reality because the music is just rap is a reflection of reality. And so if you have a problem with the content of rap, you have a problem with the content of reality. And so you want to end the music, you want to stop the music, but you don't actually want to change the reality. That's not real. That is the dumbest freaking impulse you might ever have. So if you're one of these people like this commenter is talking about who wants to move on from that music, that means you don't, don't live in the why the real judge world. was reading in open court the Young Thug lyrics. Apparently, this is the process that they're following to start this trial. Potential jurors are being bought into the court in groups of 200 or 300 they are being played a recorded video of the judge 
reading the indictment, the prosecutor's, pa it's like 80 pages, 100 pages. He's just reading it. It takes about three to three and a half hours to watch the judge read this indictment. The indictment contains the song lyrics, including F the judge, all that. Let's talk about a criminal trial. Let's talk about the idea that what's supposed to happen is impartial jurors come into court. They're not supposed to know anything about the case or have any preconceived ideas about the case and evidence is supposed to be presented to them. In this case, the first thing that these potential jurors, every juror will have done is listen to the judge, read them for three and a half hours, a document written by the prosecutor, which includes song lyrics of a gangster rapper. And then that jury will be asked to decide whether or not this person is guilty of a RICO charge, which to the common person might just mean, I don't know, he's in a gang. I don't know what the hell a RICO charge means. So that's how we're gonna start this trial in the great state of Georgia. To me, I don't understand in what world you can have a gang case that is proceeded by the judge telling every single potential juror for three to three and a half hours, reading them the lyrics as quoted by a prosecutor in an 87 page indictment, in an 87 count indictment. My head is spinning. This is not a case where criminal lawyers are gonna be enough. You need constitutional lawyers. You need due process lawyers. You need civil rights lawyers. You need lawyers who are sitting there watching every single thing that happens throughout this entire process and gets ready to challenge it on procedural grounds, on due process grounds, on basic human rights, constitutional rights grounds, because Welcome that's not how to you another episode trying. of when using rap lyrics in court goes horribly wrong. As always, this is an official transcript from United States court proceeding. We're going to dig in and you're going to love it. Watch this. So you have Miss Coker. That's the government. You have the court, which is the judge, and then you have the witness, which is the government agent who did the investigation. And the government, Ms. Coker, at the top, no further questions, Your Honor. And the court jumps in. I got a follow-up question about the Biggie Smalls lyric. And Ms. Coker, huh? What? <laughs> this is where it gets good. So right on top of my head, you see here the court says, hey, look, you know, in the government's exhibit, it says I've got seven Mac 11s, about 838s, 99s. And here's Ms. Coker, the government saying, what is that? It's a what? I don't understand what that is. And the court says, it's a Biggie Smalls lyric. I read it in your evidence. I know Biggie Smalls lyrics. This thing about nine nines, eight th eights, that's Biggie Smalls. He, she, the judge explains that to the government. And now she asks the witness, hey, investigator, this is your evidence. Are you looking for the seven Mac 11s, eight thirty eights, and nine nines? And the money shot right on top of my head from the witness. I don't recognize the lyrics is what I'm saying. No, you don't recognize the lyrics. You don't recognize that in your evidence is not a defendant telling you that he's going to buy ammo, including seven Mac 11s, 838s, and 99s. He is quoting verbatim from one of the most recognizable rap lyrics of all time from one of, if not the most famous rapper of all time and you sir using rap lyrics as part of your investigation don't know the lyrics you, you don't know that they're lyrics shame on you stay tuned until next time see here's one thing about the media a lot of people will say that oh your tory lane's coverage was so biased but show me where show me what i've made so many videos Shout out to the YouTube police, and I apologize, they take that comment back. I made a video about the YouTube police clout chasing, and this guy, 1090 Jake, I made a video, he calls me immediately. He got my number from like academics or Adam22. He's like, yo, da 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 da, we chopped it up, I explained to him we have a difference of opinion. For me, snitching means 5K statement, deposition in court. To me, probable cause affidavits written by police are not to be trusted. The moment Y'all start believing what's in a probable cause affidavit, you took a whole L. Because that's a statement written by a police officer for the judge to go arrest the person. It's not tested in a criminal proceeding. But on the Tory Lanez coverage, show me a video. Show me one video. Show me one video. Make one critique of my commentary other than, oh, he was guilty, so we were right. Okay, you got, that, that's the internet conversation. That's the conversation that people have when they can't actually have a conversation about what's the internet, going you're right about something, but you don't understand it all. Look, you're right. He can say, hey, I'm not gonna testify. My statement can't be used against other defendants, but he can get called to testify and he has to testify truthfully and he can't contradict 
the stuff that he said in his police statement. Okay, that's all facts. But how do you know that the DA didn't offer him this deal because his case is the weakest case they got. And when you take the trial, you don't want to take that weak case to trial and look silly. So let's cut bait on this weak case, go forward with our strong claims. How do you know that didn't happen? The other part, when he testifies about what he did truthfully, look at this crime. They're alleging, they're, what he did was, A, was in a car, the cops found everything in the car and they found Young Thug in the car. Yeah, he said it's not his, but he was gonna say that at trial anyway. So I don't know that he's really snitching on Young Thug there. He was gonna say it's not mine in the trial. As far as saying, all right, we got we got the, well, go ahead, you wanna shout out your app? Hey, Tommy too, man, it's gonna be famous, also. Well, Los the, the other thing that you don't understand is, you don't know how he's gonna, that testimony's gonna come out. He's gonna say, bro, I rapped about this group. I might've read about the group. I might've seen the group in the papers. I might, you, he doesn't know anything about the group's crimes that he has to tell. So it's way too soon. You haven't seen the whole story. You have to let this unfold. And stop calling the man a snitch. There's levels to this shit. Would you treat someone the same who, does a robbery with you and then the moment the cops come they just point the finger at you versus someone who's one out of 28 people in a rico charge where they're claiming that hey this guy sang about the gang in a song and they're not even saying whether this guy knows anything about what the gang did this, statement. this i think is far more interesting this is his lawyer his police statement cannot be used in court against any other defendant the internet claims that Gunner is a snitch. I don't know. I haven't been following this case. I haven't seen what's going on. I have no al idea what is an Alfred plea. But his lawyer says that the police statement cannot be used in court. What the internet is freaking out about is in court, in his police statement, he says, YSL is a gang. I was in the car with Doug and we had a gun and a drug in the car and none of that was mine. So if the lawyer is right that those statements can't be used in court against any other defendants, then Gunner did not snitch. I don't know that this is accurate. This might be true, but does that mean that the prosecutor can in no way call Sergio Kitchens to the stand or otherwise use the statement? I don't know. It remains to be seen. So the verdict here, did Gunna snitch? Keep an open mind. Like the defense attorney tells the jury, you don't know the whole story. You don't know shit. Nobody knows Jack at all about what's going on here. All right, and this shit just happened. You, it's way too soon to be drawing conclusions on what happened because here. Because you are that, you are capable, you are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step -step guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.